the second half from Indy. Brandon. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. They come out here in the eye. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, so far, this game has gone the way the defensive coordinator had hoped. They've dictated things. They've not let them run the ball very well at all. They gave up a nice game there. I doubt it'll back off their confidence. They've played so well throughout this entire game. And on the ground they go with a running back. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. So this is the second consecutive week as you look at the numbers that he just doesn't seem to have the same pop as we normally see him with. Is there an injury we don't know about? That's what I'm wondering. Because that's a legitimate question right now. We're used to speed, power all coming together. And what I've always loved about him is his vision. You know, last week he didn't have nowhere to escape and he goes down. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. The Colts send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return, and the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. fake here on first down surveying the field he's going to sling this oh and a bad throw there it's intercepted a great read and it's picked off and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back partner when you're playing cover two this is like a tag team for the safeties each of them gets a half field responsibility their job stays deep as the deepest receiver in any zone read the football, and go make a play. In this case, the free safety made the best play, an interception. The Raider defense now, here they are as they get ready to trot back onto the field. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of? Great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out, you feel like you're in control now, you're doing the dictating, they want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. Here we go now. They go play action here on first down. And he'll lay out and pull it in. What a diving catch there. It's a pickup of 21. And that'll be good for an Indianapolis first. And that's how you throw for a whole heap of yards in a game. You get efforts like that from your receivers. How about him laying out for that catch? Yeah, excellent. Makes the quarterback look a whole lot better. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. A handoff as they run the counter play. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. On any running play this call, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, 
you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. The Colts send out their punter. He's been terrific so far. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. The Colts defense, they work their way back onto the field. They've certainly got something to build off of. They had the interception last time out. And now they have to just make sure they're cognizant of not trying too hard for interceptions. Once you get one, it makes you a little more antsy to try and get another one. Now they got to be careful of double moves, different things like that against them. But they like the momentum that they've begun to build. And we'll see if they can keep that momentum going. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and the Colts pick it up. They make so many catches that are so tough, so acrobatic, so difficult, that it often surprises me when they actually turn the ball over. You know, when the ball actually comes free. It's amazing sometimes because of what we see them do on so many different plays. Had the catch, but couldn't control it on the contact. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A great play there with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Colts use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, Yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit, but for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt, you need that difference maker lugging the rock. And he's able to put it through. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Well, there they went blitz defensively, Charles, and things were paved well from the linebacker position. I love the way that you described it, paved well. Oftentimes, the guy who gets home on the blitz, he's going to get all the credit, but his teammates did all the dirty work, right? They ran into people on purpose. They sometimes tugged on jerseys to hold linemen to create space and gaps. And that play finished off really, really well. Well-conceived, well-designed, and even better executed. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. 51 yards on the punt there. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And the numbers show the improvement, and this is kind of what we thought we would expect to see from him. I know we overanalyze these things sometimes, but what, what switch? What's flipped that switch? Sometimes I think when you're as great as he is, you just kind of roll out each game and expect good things to happen. And that's not always the case. Those guys on the other side of the ball, they're the NFL two for a reason. So maybe at halftime, he gets a chance to regroup, kind of get it back together, get a little extra resolve. 
<laughs> now he's putting it into practice. They'll come out in the pistol. And they'll run it here. And he is going to lose yardage here. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. It's not always as trade as that team wanted it more than the other. But on that play, it actually was true. They were faster to the ball. And they've got an extra defensive back out there now on third and 13. They'll set up to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. You know, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he finds a man on the crossing route. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They hit that crossing route really well. Excellent timing. Puts it right on him, and he keeps running. Yeah, turned it upfield for good yardage. Offense lining up first and ten. They come out here in the eye. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And he's back here in the struggle department in this one like he was a week ago. And, partner, I think you can pin some of this on that O-line, that room to run, just not, not there. You mentioned last week that it felt like the offensive line was getting beaten to the punch by the guys across the ball. Well, it was there. pretty evident, I thought. I mean, they were off the ball fast, penetrating, getting into the offensive backfield really spilling a lot of runs before they got started. So I thought your observation was spot on then, and you're, you're right there again this week. Same thing is happening. Not able to get started because they're not able to control the point of attack. Out of the gun now on third down. And that is incomplete. One of the best routes, one of the favorite routes of any play caller. He just ran that one. Nice little angle route. That's supposed to be a catch, and usually it is in the running back drop. Yeah, I mean, he's a running back, but he's got hands. He should have caught it. Here's the Raiders punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. A look now at the Oakland defense as they get ready. Their stay on the field last time was short-lived with a three and out. See if they can get some more of that. And ordinarily, you want to be on the field playing, right? But three and out, that's almost gold to a defense. Get to the bench, get some rest, turn the ball over to your offense. We'll see what they can do here. See if they can force another three and out. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. A gain of three, second down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. It's a six-yard run. Leaves him with about a foot or so here still to go to hit the marker with third down coming up. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. 
half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. They come up in an offset eye. He'll look to throw, finding time. He'll rifle this one deep right side. Oh, wide open, complete. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A big play there. His 17th touchdown now on the season. And the Colts are able to grow their lead. Well, they went play action there and set it up nicely for him. I mean, he can flat fly, and they hit him downfield. And it doesn't take much to create that extra bit of space that a guy of his speed needs. If you go play action, all you want is just a moment where the guys covering take their attention somewhere else, and then he's by them. And once he's by them, there's no catching them. As they always like to say, if a receiver's even to a defensive back, that means he's leaving. Unless that DB is Charles Davis, right? In that case, he left me a long time ago. Come on now. <laughs> Trust me. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the 8. <laughs> They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. The Raider offense now making their way toward the huddle. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. So second and ten here. Looking to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, there really wasn't much there, but a completion is a completion. A tough third down awaits them. Completed pass on second down. Now it's third down as the defense looks for the stop. the gun they'll look to throw and this is going to be incomplete here's the Raiders punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today This is taken at the 18. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. Remember how much we enjoyed watching him last week? It's the same thing it's this week. Look same. at those numbers. <laughs> I'd hate to be a defender right now because no matter what they're throwing at him in terms of coverages, he's finding ways to defeat it. And even when he's covered, he's not covered. Hey, what is he doing? Un what, what's that term they used? He's uncoverable <laughs> and making making big catches. Really fun to watch. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. 
You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and, you know, what you need to do? Sometimes you don't even have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock, even in a situation that we're not really focused on. It. He's going to fire one. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield stripe. And they needed a break. They needed to make a play here in the third quarter. Defensively, they did that. Now they got to go quickly and get some points on the board. And the best part is that they made their own break. Taking the ball away. Now they just look at their offense and saying, guys, let's go. Come on, capitalize on this one. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. No gain on that run. And while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. He's got time. And a hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And there's a good opportunity to just want to ride there, a drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. Let's go, From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Here's the Raiders punter now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. And heading out for another drive, the Raiders defense. They got a little steam following the interception the last time they were out there, Charles. And they wanted to keep that going now because once you get one, he wanted to multiply and turn into a bunch more. And right now, they're putting up their version of a no-fly zone. No-fly zone. I like that. We, we had a flyover before the game. Yeah, but, but this time, they would intercept it. <laughs> it's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Well, partner, I think the defensive fellas got the memo, and they decided to cover him on that play. Yeah, he's already up over 100 yards in this game. They tried a deep shot, couldn't get him. Yeah, when you've had that much success, finally someone said, let's try and put a stop to it and put people on it. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big-time, spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is taken at about the 14. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return, and the Raiders will take possession. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain, and it's second down. We're off to the fourth quarter here at Week 15. Happy holidays to all. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Now he'll look 
to throw here on second and ten. He's got time in the pocket. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't played that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit, and it forced an incompletion. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. That one goes for 24 yards. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. I believe I understand where the offense was going there. They just hit a big pass play, thought they could fool them with a run, but maybe they overthought it a little bit. Just hit a nice pass, come back with another one, keep the momentum going. Second down, offense behind the sticks here. Second and 13. throw here out of the gun it's a short one here complete to his tight end they'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down offense coming up needing two yards on third down throw. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. It goes as a gain of six and it's a first down. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big time play by the defense. So the offense has it first and ten. throw here. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. It's a gain of 14 there, and that'll be good for an Oakland first down. And now the offense operates in the red zone. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And that'll make it second down. Come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Back to throw again. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. But there's almost no doubt about the play call there on third down and long. You figure they're going to throw the football. I've got to give a little credit to the offense for taking a little bit of a chance there, running the draw, hoping to catch him off guard. And that's going to be caught for a Raider touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Raiders get a score closer. Wow, talk about a big fourth down conversion for the score defensively. How do you let that happen? I think you start with the offense and you give them credit for going for it and having that type of 
Well, let's face it, audacity. But defensively, I think you're right on target, partner. There's no way something like that's supposed to happen in that situation. You're supposed to be able to shut that down and get the ball back for your own team. Instead, they give up not just a big play, but a touchdown. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't come before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Hurry up, here we go. Green three. They'll run it now out of the gun. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Hurry up, here we go. Green 39. Green 39. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They go play action here on first down. Surveying the field. Wide open receiver complete. They'll get 23 yards there. And it's good enough for an Indianapolis first down. Well, it's obvious to me that the big guy is beyond locked in. We saw last week a scintillating performance. We're seeing it again. I think he and his coordinator are in lockstep right now. Sometimes a tip of the cap to the guys calling the plays here, yeah? Not just calling the plays, setting the game plan, sitting with him during the week, watching tape as they formulate it. You know, the best ones, they listen to their guy and say, okay, what do you like this week? You like this play? You don't like that play? And that helps them formulate what they're going to do. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. the gun they'll look to throw finding time oh it stays up look at the time his throw incomplete Complete pass brings up second down. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Back to throw now on second and ten. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. They'll give him eight on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. But for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. And you figure with that, this game's pretty well out of reach. It would take a heck of a comeback at this point. Being three scores down, I think that's too much to ask with time winding down here in the fourth. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. Then he'll take this across the 25 couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line we get a glance at the Colts defense as they work their way back on the field and a touchdown given up the last time they were out there so maybe need to refocus a little bit and make sure that they don't start finger pointing with each other because oftentimes when a touchdown's given up you say okay where did that happen who broke down who gave it up 
Instead, just go back out there, be a unit again, and try and play a little bit better. Yeah, see if they can play a little bit better on this drive. That throw good for four. It's second down. But that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Six yards on the pickup, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. So he makes the grab, and the chains move forward. Nice job by the offensive line, giving them time to complete that first down pass. Fresh set of downs here. Again, he'll drop to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That throw good for four. It's second down. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves his sticks. screen it's complete and he'll get it down here to the 43 they'll get four there out of the screen and it's second down so many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage the blocking the timing of the pass to the runner everything has to fit together just right but on that play the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game and here comes play number six on this drive to throw again and that one got tipped kind of threw everything off it brings up third you gotta give some credit they're able to hop up in the air and bat that one away and that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and get some type of a pop or a shove hoping to bring his arms down on third down he'll drop to throw and he comes back with one complete 15 yards through the air and a first down. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Show some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. And he'll be dropped at the 23 after a pickup of about four. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Raider football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. So second and medium, second and five now. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. And this seemingly endless drive continues. Here we go now. Blue, Out of the gun now on third down. And this is 
is caught. Touchdown, Raiders. Their dangerous wide receiver. His 10th touchdown of the season, second of the game. And the Raiders make some inroads here on that deficit. And that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion, doesn't it? Now, it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game, they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this is going to be taken in by the Colts. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. The Raiders' defense getting ready. And last time out, they gave up three. But with this deficit, how important here is it to not give up any points? And they're at a point now where they can't allow any thoughts of any points to enter their mind. They gave up three last time. That felt okay. They can't settle for okay now. They have to stop them here. Zero points given up. Yeah, they need to stop, get the ball back to the offense. And he'll take it. Now Whistles and the Raiders are going to signal for a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he works it to the... Now the Raiders are going to use another timeout here. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They come up at an offset eye. They'll give it to him right up the gut. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Now hang on here. Timeout called. Timeout called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout. So as they talk things over, we'll step aside. Three yards to go here on second down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers. They're usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they were just roam and hit. Eight yards there and a first down. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one. You know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. The Colts in victory formation now as they take the knee. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So for Indianapolis, they continue to roll as the win gets them to 12 and 2 on the year. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Meanwhile, for Oakland, the loss might knock them out of playoff contention as they drop to 6 and 8. And they'll be off to Minneapolis next week for a look at new U.S. Bank Stadium and a date with the Vikings.
So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Colts are winners as we say so long from Indianapolis.